So I'm here to talk to you about building a name pronunciation quote unquote database uh, using both Power Ops and Power Automate. And just first to tell you a little bit about myself, uh, my name is Lindsay Shelton. I am an application programmer from the Kansas City metro area. I am a Microsoft certified trainer and a fun fact about me, I was actually a teacher for 10 years before switching careers and I don't regret a single day uh, switching careers. I uh, love doing what I do now. I'm really excited about it every day. And I do a lot of different things with my current uh, position. My biggest push that I'm working on right now is power platform adoption, governance, implementation at my organization, which I'm really excited about. But I've also done work with things like SharePoint uh, framework development, uh, Azure APIM implementation. So if any of that interests you, feel free to connect with me on socials, LinkedIn at Lindsay T. Shelton. Uh, you can reach out to me on my blog, lindsaytshelton.com, that I need to update more. Uh, or I'm most active on Twitter at lshelton underscore tech. And um, so if any of those topics are interesting to you or you want to, you know, hear about my cats, uh, feel free to reach out and connect with me. So this is something, you know, I don't have a name that's mispronounced very often, but I do have a name that's misspelled quite a lot. So I, I can understand certainly why it's important. This is a quote that kind of helped drive why this was an important initiative for us to work on. Our names are our identities closely linked to our heritage. Mispronouncing a name can be experienced as a kind of microaggression, as the person may feel put down, invisible, or unworthy. And I don't think anyone on this call would ever want to make someone feel any of those ways, and especially not on purpose. And I think, you know, the bigger issue is we don't do it on purpose. We just don't necessarily have a way of knowing how to pronounce someone's name, especially in this time of hybrid work where we're not meeting people face to face and getting to hear their names. You know, we're, we're kind of putting out our best guess and there's not an easy built in out of the box way for Microsoft, you know, like there is with LinkedIn to tell us how to pronounce someone's name. And this was especially an important initiative where I work because we are a medical research institute. We're a nonprofit. And because we're a, you know, a scientific organization, we bring in employees from all over the globe. So we celebrate diversity. We're an incredibly diverse organization. So, you know, what were we doing to help you know, support and celebrate these unique individuals that we have working for us. And so we actually had a hackathon, which is a really cool, fun thing to do. Even if it's not um, all with your, your IT department, we brought in people who were non-IT people. And uh, just we do this for three days every year. And so I had actually seven women on my team this year for our hackathon, and we came up with this solution. So it's not technically a database. It's just, uh, you know, a, a more of a casual misnomer to call it a database. Uh, what it is, it's a SharePoint site, and it's got two columns on it. One column has an embedded Power App, and one column has an embedded SharePoint document library. And the way it works is one of our, we call them members, our users, will come in and record their name pronunciations. And we actually added in pronouns because in the year of 2023, we also don't have a built-in way in Microsoft to, uh, you know, record our pronoun preference. So, you know, we have the prompt up here. You can say, you know, your name pronunciation, my pronouns are, are they, them, or whatever they are. You record it through the Power App, and then it's populated uh, via a Power Automate flow into the SharePoint document library. I just bl uh, blurred out the names for privacy. And then you can go in here and listen to other people's name pronunciations and pronouns. So, you know, if I'm going to go meet with someone or if I've just met someone and I'm not sure how to pronounce their name, I can listen to it as many times as I want to and practice it so that the next time I meet them, I can be confident in saying their name instead of avoiding it or mispronouncing it. 
The solution is actually made up of this Power app sitting on top of the Power Automate flow, which sits on top of the SharePoint page and document library. And I will tell you, I am not a, a UI person. <laughs> Our, um, one of my teammates actually graduated from Kansas City Art Institute, and she wanted to get her hands on this. And I said, you don't know how to do Power Apps. You're going to break it. So forgive any UI problems with it. Um, how does it work on the front end? So the user clicks on this microphone control to start uh, the recording. They record their name and pronouns if they wish, and they click the same button to stop the recording. Then they go down to step two. This is not actually populated when they just first open up the app. So they uh, click here and the, the preview audio button, and then it populates this audio control in a gallery. Then they can listen to their name, uh, you know, their recording as many times as they'd like. They can trash it. They can start over, record it again, preview audio, do that as many times as they want. It's not getting uploaded. Nothing's actually happening. It's just living in the app. And then as soon as they're happy with it, they click the upload audio file button. Then a Power Automate flow is working in the background to upload it to the SharePoint document library, which is, as I showed you, on the other side of the page that has the Power App on it. Uh, the Power App uses just some basic media controls. It's got the microphone control and then the audio control that plays the recording back. It's got a gallery control that has the audio recordings in it that just shows you the most recent recording the button that populates the gallery with the most recent recording done, and then that button at the bottom, the upload button, that is triggering a Power Automate workflow. It is pneumorphic just to be extra because I had a little extra time in the hackathon, so I wanted to use one of Christine Kay's tutorials and make it a little bit cool. Uh, so just to show you, I'm not going to show you everything. This sample is in the PNP samples gallery, both the Power App and the Power Automate workflow. So you can feel free to grab it and use it however you would like. But um, I did want to point out just a few things. So this microphone control here, it's not the on start that does anything. It's the on stop where we actually set things up. And now I'm going to try to explain this to you, but I'm also going to tell you right now, Daniel Christian posted a video a few years ago that went into the technical details of this, and this is how I was able to make this happen. So he didn't have this exact use case, and I did some tweaking with my own, but I just have to shout out Daniel Christian because I wouldn't have been able to get this work without his video. Uh, this first up here, this sets the timestamp for the video. Then we get the actual audio for the recording. Once again, we stop the recording. Then basically, as it was explained, the audio file, we get a ton of data around the audio file. We don't need most of that data. So these next two things, the temp JSON and the string beef 64 var, that's just pulling out just the little bits that we need in order to send those to SharePoint ultimately. So um, we're going to use specifically this string B64 var in the next uh, control, which is this preview audio button. So like I said, this doesn't show up. I can actually show you that really quick. I forgot to pull that up here. So the way that it actually works is Lindsay Shelton, my pronouns are she, her. I preview the audio and then that control shows up and I can delete it or I can preview it again and then I can upload it. So when I go back in here from current slide. Uh, so when I click that preview audio button, what it's doing is it's building, a, it's uh, using the collect function and it's gathering uh, most importantly, these three variables the duration variable, which we're going to use and put in our SharePoint library, uh, the recording name, which is obviously going to be the name of our file, and the recording itself, which you can see we're setting to this string B64 variable. So that's that kind of finessed, uh, finagled version of the audio that we're, we're going to utilize. And that's what's going to be uploaded when we click that upload audio button. So we're triggering the Power Automate flow, so let's switch gears here. Let's go over to that. Prior to making the Power Automate flow, you want to make a SharePoint document library, and it's very simple setup. The only column you need to add is a number column called duration. So call it duration, just a number column. You don't need to change any of the other settings. 
Then you go and you make your flow. The trigger is Power Apps, Instant Flow. And then we're bringing over, as I said, three variables from the Power App. So we're initializing a variable using that string 64 var uh, variable. And we're turning it into a string. We're, we're including that value in here. And we're calling it the base 64 to audio. Then we're creating a file in SharePoint. So we've got our site name, our folder path. This is the second variable here, the create file. This is the file name. I just have to add the .mp3 just to kind of type it. And then this is the really the trickiest part of the flow is we're using one expression. Uh, this is the one thing I did have to tweak from how Daniel's video did it. I'm not sure why. I, you know, I kind of smash my way through things and then just tweak, try things until they work. I had to use base64 to binary and then translate this variable, the base64 to audio. I translated that to binary and that's what got it to work. And so that's the file content. And then we just had to add a third um, action here for updating the file properties because I wanted to put in the duration. For me, especially when testing, it was helpful to see the duration because I could tell, oh, this is that file I just tested or, oh, it didn't upload properly because that duration didn't change. So we've got those three items that came over from the Power App and it's really just um, needs to be three actions in the Power Automate flow. I have a few extras just to make it more, um, just to add more variables, but you don't necessarily need to have those. And then when you're actually clicking um, upload the audio file, we're using the for all. We've got the name of our Power Automate flow here, the generic save audio file to SharePoint Online run, and then our three variables recording, the recording name, and the duration. So that's basically it. I'm sorry if I went through that too fast, but like I said, it is on the PNP samples gallery. Um, the whole project, as I said, wouldn't be possible without Daniel Christian's uh, a, a video. So go check out his YouTube channel and also check out Christine Kay's um, tutorial. She makes some amazing stuff. She um, did the walkthrough on the pneumorphic buttons. I, I didn't show you the pneumorphic button. I'll show you it to you really quick. Ooh, ah, there you go. That's it. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you, Lindsay. This is really fantastic. And for someone who always has trouble, I'm, I'm horrible at it, I admit. Uh, I love this. So helpful. It creates a sense of togetherness and respect for other people uh, to properly identify and call them by their real name. So thank you for sharing that. Really great stuff. Um, exactly. And a lot right. of people forget that, you know, it's not just foreign people's names. Like my name is going to be hard for someone from a different country to say, too. So it's everyone's names that, you know, needs help in practice. Exactly. For me, I, I, that's why I tell everybody, hey, just say, hey, you. <laughs> I'll respond to, hey, you. And that's, that's good enough. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Lindsay.